From the News Channel 8 studios, let's talk live with your hosts, Natasha Barrett and Doug McElway. Hello, it's time for Let's Talk Live. Miss Melanie Hastings is in for Doug today, and I hear you're just back from vacation. I am, can you tell? She has this tan, she has this Little glow, glow about her. Yes. I'm very jealous. <laughs> and when you talk about it, she just smiles. I know. Work has not nice. ruined your vacation no. glow yet. And you know, two days back, and I still kind of have that nice chill going on yeah. you get after vacation, so it was worth it. Very nice week off. Good to So hear. Doug is, uh, I guess he has news duties today? Yeah, Doug is on uh, news right now, and he'll be back with us tomorrow. All right. Good so to know. You're along for the ride. I we am have a indeed. good show planned. We're going to talk about the economy, namely who should be in charge of getting it back on track. Plus how you can help girls put their best foot forward through what they're wearing. Demand out there. Thanks, yep. Dave. Sure. Thank you. Well, could girl power be the key to turning this terrible economy around? Hmm. Some recent studies actually show that companies with more women in top positions make more money <laughs> of course in fact some economists speculated that if there were more women on Wall Street the economic downturn might have been averted so is fixing the economy women's work Jean Stafford from executive coaching for women joins us now and I read an article that said basically said the healthy we need a healthy dose of estrogen and they said that might be the key to fiscal recovery and the economic and having economic strength worldwide. What do you think, Jean? Don't you like that? I, I really do. like I hearing agree. that headline. Wholeheartedly. <laughs> you know, uh, the, a lot has been said about the uh, conversation in the hallways at Davos, the, econo the World Economic Forum, and the economists from around the world and the business leaders were saying, if we had had more women at the helm of some of these financial institutions, that could have balanced out some of the risk-taking that was being done uh, 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 on the trading floor. Um, you know, a recent study that w is widely being cited shows that when men are together with other men who are much like them and you throw money into the mix, it's they're risky. more likely uh -huh. to take higher risk, high return bets in order to recoup monetary losses. Now this comes down to hormones. Well, testosterone is another study that was looked at. Uh, the testosterone levels of the traders was evaluated over different uh, uh, times during the day. And what was found was that as men were making more money on the trading floor, their testosterone levels were elevated, which then clouded their judgment and interfered with their ability to engage in rational choice. Which is wow. why they what say, what about study? left side, right side? Now, huh? the thing, well, the studies we read here, and you probably read the same ones, with it, it's all having to deal with testosterone testosterone and estrogen hmm. that they're risk-taking so their results aren't that good we tend to what what did it say collaborate and you know we have caution and we get better results we are cautious you know one of those same studies also indicated that women are not subject to the peer pressure under similar circumstances so literally when men are together with each other they're competing with each other for who can make the most money you know what I found was interesting was that these companies know about this. And the people they know have about known it. that that women in top positions do help their bottom line. Why is it that more women then are not in these top positions? Well, men are still in charge. I think. Well, <laughs> I think you make a very good point. I think you absolutely make a very good point. And of course, the financial world has been a men's club for a very long time and yeah. is arguably one of the most male-dominated sectors in business. But it is time. I agree with you to start some shifts here, isn't it? Um, another interesting study, Melanie. Uh, over a 30-year period, fund managers were studied. Mm -hmm. And what was found is that the women fund managers use more measured strategies to then get results that were more consistent. And so what that really means is that over time, they didn't uh, bring in the highest returns, but they were never at the bottom either. So that's a good indicator, particularly in the financial sector, uh, that, that women are better uh, or need to be represented. Uh, you know, specifically some of the things they bring, if I could just point that out, right. as you had said, women are more cautious, uh, they tend to see the bigger picture, and um, they're not ego-driven. It seems like, Jean, though, that some things may be changing just with our economy. There, there have been stats that show that the laid-off victims in these business mm -hmm. worlds are now men. Yeah. So what does that tell you? Is the tide changing? Well, men really are taking the hit for all of this because many of the sectors that drove the successful economy 
particularly construction. Uh, those are largely male-dominated um, sectors of the economy, and so those are where the layoffs are happening, and of mm -hmm. course in the financial sector, we saw, saw a lot of layoffs there. Uh, so they are taking the hit. We are in a revolution. There's no question about that, and revolution does create new opportunity. I think your uh, mention of this catalyst study that demonstrates companies that have more women at the top are more profitable. Uh, there's more uh, a higher return on equity for shareholders, and uh, uh, those companies make more money. I, is so it all so women, or is it just you know women at the top, or is it diversity in general? Very good. I think that's that's an important point. Diversity trumps. Uh, intellect any day of the week. Mm -hmm. It's it's wide a widely held view that a diverse group of people is going to engage in more successful problem solving than a group of people who are all alike, no matter how smart those people I find are. It's so interesting because mm -hmm. for so long until this day, women always get called emotional. You can't be in that power position because you are women are obviously we mm -hmm. we listen to our emotions and sometimes play on them. So I mean, you always hear them, that, and right? we have the time yeah. of the month, so how can we make this decision? <laughs> right. But you know what? We laugh about it, but some people believe that. And it's cult cultural mythology, right, that, that is consistently played as a trump card. Uh, there are many things in our language and many beliefs that most people know are not true, but they're still used as, as excuses. I think uh, it's important to recognize that in the current environment, uh, smart companies are investing in their high potential women, mm -hmm. making them uh, uh, more successful in whatever needs to happen so that they can raise to those positions uh, at the executive level because it's a profitability issue for these companies, right, as you pointed out. And also smart women, and I'm advising my clients, you can use this as part of your business case for why you should have a seat at the table. So what do you think? Look into your crystal ball quickly and tell us, you know, now that we've seen this terrible recession happen and brought on by some of these risk-taking decisions that mm -hmm. happened in the past, what do you see happening? You know, companies want to be profitable. The companies want to be profitable. We want our economy to recover, right? I think you make a good point. And uh, let me cite a, an article in Foreign Policy magazine. The title of it was The Death of Macho, right? Uh, and citing the fact that many of the people who are, are suffering in this uh, economic downturn really are the men. Right. Um, but, but the truth is women are suffering from that also because women had fewer jobs to begin with. I want to ask you one quick question. We've got to go. Is it fair? We're all women up here. We're rooting for us. But is it fair? to blame the men in this recession. Again, diversity diversity is the most important thing. Uh, I, sure, I think we can point our finger at them because they <laughs> were at fair? the helm, right? Yeah, it's easy for us to do, right? <laughs> it's right? fair to me. <laughs> All right. Jean Last Stafford, word. thanks for coming and a back good in. one. <laughs> yeah, we could go on and on about Thank this you, subject. Jean. It was fun. Thanks. Laura, well, Melanie and I are going to step away for a sponsored segment. And then when we come back, it's uh, a controversial apology that has a lot of people talking today. What does the future hold for Chris Brown? And here's our website, Let's Talk Live at News8. That's our email, Let's Talk Live at News8.net. Our website, Let's Talk Live.tv. Talk to us either way. But first, how do you stay in shape? Anything cardiovascular. I mean, uh, I, like, I like running, biking, swimming.